In this video, I'm going to do some maintenance on my Linux furnace. If it's working properly, if you take the front panel off, it'll look like this. It was not working properly for me. I had had some water leak down into the furnace. It was heating our home intermittently. I was getting this diagnostic light on the front. I checked a few things. The first thing I checked was the thermostat. Now I had had the thermostat set at 68 degrees, but the house had remained at 62 all day. I also checked the air filter and checked the air flow through the filter. That was fine as well. I replaced that every month. On the front of the furnace, this is where you'll see the diagnostic lights blinking. So I shut the furnace off, removed these two front panels. When you remove those two front panels, these lights will stop blinking, and that's because there's a kill switch. You do need to take note of those lights before you take the panels off. There's a sticker on the front panel that has diagnostic codes and statuses of the furnace. These first two columns have the red and green patterns that correspond to this right column that has a list of potential issues. I was having issues with the limit switches. Now I also wrote down the model number, which I found on a sticker underneath the burner. I took note of that, that came in handy later. There are a couple different types of limit switches I learned. There's these disc style limit switches, and then there's a limit switch that sets in the hot airflow inside the actual furnace. Now there's also a flame sensor. I wasn't having issues with the flame sensor, but because I serviced that sensor several times in the past, I decided to replace it. And then the control board uh, because it was water that had caused damage to the furnace, I thought I'd better replace the control board as well, just in case there's some kind of a short in the board. Now, finding all these parts ended up taking me several hours. I did research online, went to several sites, and I ended up being able to track the part numbers down. There were two parts that I had challenges with, and Supply House was very helpful helping me find the equivalent replacements because the part numbers had actually changed from the originals. So this is that disc style limit switch that I got a replacement for. And here is the flame sensor. Here, I'm taking out the control board. This was an exact match to the original. I was very pleased about that. All of these parts that you see cost around $175 with shipping. I began by replacing the flame sensor. Now, every couple of years, I service this sensor and I thought, hey, I'm just going to go ahead and replace it because it's not that expensive. I removed the set screw. Normally, I just clean this off with some steel wool or some sandpaper. Carbon will build up on this sensor and kind of act as an insulator and prevent it from sensing correctly. You can see a little carbon build up on it, you know, there. Now, the part number on this had changed. So this was one of those two parts that I had had challenges finding a replacement for. The original part said PSE L50, and the new part said PSE L56. <laughs> so not a huge difference in, in terms of the actual lettering that's located here, but the folks at Supply House used the model number of the furnace to give me the equivalent replacement. So this is the part that I needed and it worked just fine. I put the lead on, replaced the set screw. Be careful when you replace these set screws not to over tighten them because you don't want to strip out the threading in that thin sheet metal. So just snug is all, all they need to be. The second sensor I replaced was this disc style limit switch. This is a 250 degree Fahrenheit limit switch water had leaked down directly through this limit switch. You can see the corrosion on it. And it had leaked down inside these two leads. So this is one I was really 
adamant about replacing. You can see the part number there. And there are these two little wings on it. It's that little blue dot you see needs to face the front of the furnace or the back of the, the front panel. And then the little wing, it fits down inside that sheet metal. Kind of tilt it up a little bit, slide that wing down into that notch, and then take your set screw and just tighten that down. Again, just snug, not over tightened, and then replace the leads. The other limit switch was also challenging to find. I was able to find the first sequence of numbers, that 49L86, but that 01 at the end was hard to find. And there were multiple versions of this limit switch with that same first sequence of numbers. All you have to do is loosen the bottom set screw, remove the top set screw, and then there's a little notch there that that bottom set screw sets on. And then there's a little insulation on the back and kind of a fiberglass gasket. Here's the replacement again, 49L8601. And this was an exact replacement. Now what's really important about this particular limit switch is making sure that the limit range of temperature is the same. So if we compare the new limit switch here with the old one, you'll see that L175-30F, that's 175 to 30 degrees Fahrenheit. So I put the new limit switch on the set screw with its notch, tightened in the top set screw, tightened the bottom set screw, and then just put those two leads on, and that was it. Easy replacement. The control board was a little more intimidating. So I, I thought, I'm just going to map these wires from the old board to the new board. I'll just move one wire at a time. I'll take my time, and that should mitigate me plugging anything in to the wrong uh, connector. So that's essentially what I did. I just unplugged one wire from the old board, plugged it into the same lead on the new board, and some of them were you know, pretty snug, so I had to wiggle them to, to get them loose. I got to a point where I couldn't really move any more wires without removing the old control board. So here I just took a long pair of needle nose pliers, squeezed to those little plastic mounting pegs, and the old board came right off. Now those plastic mounting pegs were replaced with the new board. And it was going to be quite a chore to get behind that metal to squeeze the backside, so I ended up just taking a pair of wire clipping pliers and I, I just cut those off. The new board I lined up with the holes and gave it a nice firm press, careful not to flex the board too much. That was a mistake what I did just there, so if you're watching this and using this as an instructional video, don't plug that black wire in there. I'll show you a correction. Now these are the leads that go up to the thermostat. I, again, just unscrewed one set of leads or one lead and moved them over to the new board. Tighten them down. I didn't want to get them in, any of them mixed up. I think this whole process took about a half hour, so it wasn't a real long repair. Now, one thing that's very important to take note of, on the board, right next to those leads that go up to the thermostat, there's a little jumper. You can see it right here. Make sure 
that the jumper on the new board matches the placement of the jumper on the old board. I, I moved that jumper there. Now at this point I thought, I think I've got everything connected correctly. I'm gonna go ahead and put it all back together. So I put those two front panels on and then I realized I'd better check the wiring and I had plugged this hot 120 volt wire into the neutral lead. So that's, that's gotta be moved over. And I took the panels back off, fixed that, put the panels back on, turned on the furnace and everything came online just the way it was supposed to. Now, right after I turned the furnace on, I looked through that little window at those diagnostic lights. They were blinking, uh, indicating normal operation. And with the furnace operating normally, I saw this, I took that panel off. I could see the right burner in front of that right burner, a little glow plug lit up. And then the solenoid that controls the gas flow into the furnace opened and all four burners lit. And so this is what it looks like under normal operation. Now on the left hand side you can see that flame sensor poking down into that left burner. So that's that's the flame sensor. Above it is one of the disc type limit switches. Here on the right is the one that we replaced and then up here is that other limit switch. And that was it. I appreciate you watching this video. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And thanks for watching.